The colored pencils I never thought I'd buy. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Our Set Play, and I am finally using the Holbein Artist Colored Pencils. I never thought I would see this day coming. I was not ever going to buy these unless they came to the U.S., and they finally did. Before they came to the U.S., I didn't feel comfortable buying a pencil that was so expensive without having the option of buying it open stock. And I know that they came to Jackson's Art Supply, um, and I could have had them shipped to the U.S. that way shortly before they came to Blick, but I, they're already an expensive pencil, and I just, I don't know. I wanted it I wanted to make sure that I would be able to get them whenever I needed to, and I I know that I can do that with Blick. And Blick has some sets, and they also have open stock, and so, yeah, I'm pretty excited. So these are the 24 set. I got this set because when I was looking online, I could see the light fast ratings in the picture, and I saw that these were all three and twos. So I did find a light fast chart online. I... I'm only able to read English, and so I wasn't able to really properly read it, but from what I could glean, the three stars mean that they're highly light fast, and then obviously it goes down the line to two stars being light fast, and then one star, I think, is obviously not very light fast, and I believe they have a few slash marks that mean they're fugitive or not tested, if I remember right, although I don't have the chart pulled up right now. I will link that in the description, though. So I went according to really, like, my experience as a colored pencil artist in figuring out which ones were the light fast, because I know in most of my sets, black and white tend to be light fast. So when I saw that the black and the white both three stars, I knew that those were light fast and that the three stars meant light fast. And so that meant that these were all threes and twos. So I felt pretty confident that I had gotten the light fast set. Now, don't quote me on it. I'm not going to be selling this first piece. I'm sure I will do more research. I know that the Colored Pencil Society of America plans on doing light fast testing on these. And so I'll feel more comfortable once I see their testing. I'm not sure if they've done it yet, but I have heard that that is going to be in the works. So, <laughs> that long drawn out speech, I got the 24 set, I think that this is a good range of colors to start with, and I was not going to spring five, for like $500 for a large set that I know is going to have a lot of fugitive colors in it. I know that this brand is known for having a wide range of pastel colors and a wide range of really, really bright neon colors, but those don't tend to be light fast, nor are they colors that I really use a whole lot in my own artwork. So I figured that there was no reason for me to buy a full set when I knew a lot of them I wouldn't be using or I'd have to get rid of because they weren't light fast. So that's why I got the 24 set to start with. If I fall in love, I will buy some others open stock on Blick, obviously keeping light fast ratings in mind. So here we go. Lots of rambling in this one. Let's take a look at the pencils themselves. So, beautiful barrel. Nice coloration. The paint seems to match the core pretty well. I'll know better once I start working with them. Very nice shiny writing, if I can get my camera to focus so you can actually see it. There we go. So Holbein Artist Color Pencil, it says right here, it's from Japan. It says the name of the color, the number of the color, so you can reorder. Again, it says Holbein Works. And it also has the light fast rating right on the side, which is amazing. So it definitely feels very high quality, lightweight, um, not too thin, not too thick. Let me see if I have, I have one of my Faber-Castells here. It's obviously used quite a bit. And you see me compare this, I believe I compared this a little bit in my art haul video as well. About the same thickness. So fits comfortably in the hand. Feels very similar. Even a bit of a similar look to the Faber-Castell Poly Chromos with 
you know, the gold and having the stripe here. Closed off end. Pre-sharpened. So I can't tell as easily since they're pre-sharpened if the core is centered. But it does appear to be... That's never going to focus. It does appear to be quite centered. So they look beautiful. They come in a nice sturdy tin. It has like this kind of egg carton feeling um, paper that they sit in. So it's not like it doesn't sit in individual groups for the pencils. They just kind of sit in this paper to keep them protected. None of them seem to be broken. So I apparently this padding works okay. I will be putting these in my drawers that I use to store my pencils. So looks wise, they look beautiful. They feel beautiful. I won't know if they're worth the money though until I actually do a piece. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do, I did a few swatches comparing them to other pencils that I work with, namely the Derwent Lightfast and the Faber-Castell Polychromos. In my video where I show you that I got these, I will link that video so you can see because I have a little information in there. Um, I think I compared some of the blue colors just to see how they feel. But I think the first thing that I want to do with this is compare it to some of my other pencils. And I'm actually going to do that on black paper because I want to see how well this white pencil adds up to my other white pencils that I use. So you will see that in a little bit. I'll show you the pencils that I'm going to be using. Clearly, I have the Prismacolor Premier pencil that's known to be a pretty good white I have the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil, definitely more transparent, not my favorite white. The Luminance white, which tends to be a very good white. The Derwent Lightfast white. And the Derwent Drawing Chinese white, which is the creme de la creme of white pencils. <laughs> As you can see, since it's so miniature compared to my other pencils. So I'm going to compare those on black paper to see. And I'm going to switch to voiceover for that because swatching can take a little bit. And then after that, I am going to start on a small project where I can try and utilize as many of these colors as possible. So we will see if I feel like I got my money's worth on these pencils. All right. Talk about giving into peer pressure, folks. This is the black Faber-Castell mixed media paper. It feels quite similar to the Canson Me Tints. It has some texture to it. I'm going to try to use the smoother side, even though it's not smooth smooth, just to see how these pencils do. Wow, okay, so, so far, I am pretty darn happy. Look at that white. It's pretty darn close to the Derwent drawing Chinese white. The light fast and luminance seem to be around the same level. Prismacolor actually seems to be a little bit whiter than these two, but not quite as white as the drawing in the Holbein, and of course the Polychromos bomb, as usual when it comes to white. Wonderful pencils, their white is useless. Okay, so I'm pretty excited now. Like, I can't wait to see how these work in actual application. So I am going to start working on my little landscape now. Okay, so switching to my little project now. This is just going to be a small little landscape. This is a 6x8 watercolor block. It is, I believe it's the Fluid Hot Press watercolor paper. And it's actually really convenient to work on because I don't have to worry about taping down my edges or any of that. It stays put and it's a nice smooth surface with just enough tooth for me to use colored pencil on. Okay, so first of all, I do want to say that this is not any sort of tutorial. Inevitably, whenever I do a review, people are 
confused by why I am not talking about the project that I'm doing and I'm talking about the product, well, this is a review. So I'm talking about the product. I do have some colored pencil landscape tutorial type videos in my colored pencil playlist. So feel free to go there if you'd like to see more. I can link that in the description below. It is a small project and there are times when my hand is blocking what is happening. I apologize for that. I do end up later on changing camera angles to make it a little bit more easy to see what I'm doing. However, it's just kind of one of the hazards of the job. <laughs> it is what it is. It's hard to film from above sometimes. So I apologize for that. I do try to remedy it. Okay, so now with all those disclaimers out of the way, let's actually start talking about these pencils. I was adamant I was not going to get these pencils and then they came to Blick and people have asked me to use them before and I had always hesitated. It's kind of funny though because I think this is one of the first colored pencils I had ever heard of. I started with Prismacolor and I believe that when I really first started getting into colored pencil I heard people talking about these pencils online and they looked so beautiful and exciting to me but then I saw the prices and I realized it wasn't easy to get them in the US and I wouldn't be able to get them open stock. We all know the story and I was like well <laughs> That's never going to happen for me. And then I was a little bit kind of jaded by it because I was like, why? Like Holbein sells all kinds of things in the U.S. Why can't they sell their pencils here? And so I just never thought it was going to happen. There had been other avenues to buy them and to have them shipped here. And I just didn't want to do it until I knew I could buy them easily in the U.S. from a company that I buy from often so that I could buy them conveniently. And now it has happened. So here we are. I am finally using the Holbein colored pencils. So let's talk about them a little bit. Are they wax or oil based? Well, I had a hard time finding specifically if they were wax or oil based. And it turns out that on the Holbein website, which I will link everything in the description below so that you can see other resources. I saw that they advertise them as a combination of oil, wax, and fat. And I think that's mainly what most colored pencils are made from anyways. And so they don't really advertise that they lean towards wax or oil, but they do mention that they're soft. And so usually that tends to be a waxier based. However, as far as working with them, I found them to be hard enough to make it really easy to sharpen to a fine point, which is really, really exciting, but soft enough to blend with really easily. And so, I don't know, it's kind of, to me, they feel in between a wax and oil base. They do have some crumbs that come off, noticeably so, and while the lead itself doesn't just snap right off like a Prisma color, there is a little bit of tiny shards and crumbs that come off onto the paper, more noticeably than some of my other colored pencil brands. And so that's something to keep in mind when working with these, especially if you're someone who likes to do, say, pet portraiture and you like to keep a nice clean white background. It's just something to keep in mind. They do shed a little bit. However, when I was working with these, I, can, I could not really escape the feeling that I have worked with something similar before. And I know a lot of people compare, compare these to the Polychromos and I can see why they would compare them. They do have a 3.8 millimeter core with a 7.8 millimeter case. And that's exactly the kind of measurements and width of the Polychromos. So they feel very similar as far as holding it in the hand and with the fact that you can sharpen them to a fine point. However, I do find that they lay down coverage a lot quicker than Polychromos. I didn't need nearly as many layers as I do with my Polychromos. And I love my Polychromos. It's not a knock against them. They are a fantastic pencil. However, I found that it was easier to get saturation with these than the Polychromos. And then I realized what they felt like to me. They felt just like working with the vintage barrel Prismacolors that I just reviewed on my channel recently. And I have to say, to me, that is very, very exciting because the whole time I worked with those barrel Prismacolors, I remember thinking to myself, man, I really wish Prismacolor hadn't changed the way they make their pencils. And I really wish these pencils still existed in this form. And so when I picked these up and I discovered that they felt a lot like that, with the beautiful blendability of a Prismacolor, but the 
very limited breakage of a wax, I mean, an oil-based pencil. I was so excited. They really do feel a lot like Barrel Prismacolor. And so I have to say that I think I have fallen in love and I'm very upset about that, as is my wallet and I'm sure my husband will be as well. Um, because I have already started to put some open stock pencils in my car at Blick. And, yep, uh, here I am. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about the pencils. So I think that the color selection in this particular set was really, really good. I was really pleased with it. There was pink, carmine, scarlet, orange, burnt sienna, Jean Brilliant, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, Marigold, Canary Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Fresh Green, Viridian, Apple Green, Holly Green, Forest Green, Aqua, Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue, Prussian Blue, Violet, Magenta, White, and Black. And as somebody who does a lot of landscape or nature-inspired art, I found that this was the perfect, well, almost perfect combination of colors, and it was exactly what I needed for this piece. I did end up using every single color at, in one point or another in this piece, either to use complementary colors in the shadows or obviously as regular base colors. And I, yeah, I was really excited about that. There was not one pencil in this set that I didn't use for this project. So to me, that was definitely well worth buying the whole set. But also, well, I say whole set, the 24 set is what I bought. So I think that that was very exciting. One thing that I would have liked to see, even though they had a pretty good range of greens, I would have liked to, to see a green, like a dark green that was a little bit warmer in hue, but that's really more of a personal preference because I tend to go more towards the warm greens and the cool greens, especially when I am drawing or painting something on a sunny day, but that's kind of a personal preference. The only other thing that I can really say as far as like color selection goes and kind of lacking, um, the black really wasn't as dark as I was hoping it would be, especially in contrast to how nice the white is. And so I was a little bit disappointed there, but it's definitely not the worst black colored pencil I've ever used. I can think um, like the Blick colored pencils come to mind. I was not a fan of their black, definitely not dark enough. So I think that it wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible either. I will definitely probably later on supplement with the um, Derwent Drawing Black because that's probably, as the Chinese white is normally the whitest white on the market, the Derwent Drawing Black is like the blackest black pencil I can find on the market. And so, but that's not unusual. I supplement with that pencil a lot in most of my brands. So maybe I'm just a little bit spoiled because I'm used to using that particular black pencil. But I did, I was able to get the shadows in and everything, so I definitely layered in the shadows with my darker colors, and I, all in all, was very happy with the way most of the colors laid down. One other thing that I like to address when it comes to the color is how well the barrels match the core. I was very, very surprised at how well they actually match and that's not that's kind of unusual for colored pencils most of the time the paint on the outside casing is not accurate to the core and i'm not saying that these are 100 percent accurate but they're pretty darn accurate compared to other pencils that i use and i was really happy with that because i am somebody who doesn't tend to really like to swatch all my colors if I can help it. I would just rather jump in and create a project. I'll do a little bit of swatching here and there, which like you saw in the beginning, but for the most part, I want to jump in and see how the pencils work in an actual project. And so the fact that I can pick up a pencil and be fairly confident that it's going to match the paint on the outside of it is very, very exciting to me. Something else that I like about the barrel of these pencils is the fact that it's closed off on the end. And while that makes it a little bit more difficult to check to see if the core is centered, it also usually indicates that the core is glued in the middle, which means that if for some reason they get banged around in transit or while they're shipping, or if you drop them on the floor and the core breaks a little bit inside, it's not just going to fall out of the barrel when you're sharpening it. <clears throat> Prismacolor. <laughs> 
And so that usually indicates a nice high quality pencil because that way there, even if it is broken inside, when you sharpen, it will stay put and you don't lose the core, which essentially is losing money because that's what you're making your art with. And so I think that that is definitely something they have going for them. I also am pretty excited about the fact, as I mentioned, that they mentioned the light fast ratings on the outside. And as I've done some more research, it does appear that three stars is the more light fast pencil. And I will link whatever resources I have in the description below, including a nice review that my friend Harry did at the Art Gear Guide. He's awesome. I'm sure most of you have heard of him. He does great reviews on his channel. He does great reviews on his blog. So I will share that in the link below so you can see another artist's opinion on these pencils. But yeah, so all in all, I think it was a pretty, it's a pretty good set. I did go online, like I said, and the good thing about the Blick website is that when you zoom in on the pencil, you can actually see the light fast ratings. And so I put a bunch in my cart <laughs> and I probably won't be ordering them anytime soon. It won't be until I can save up enough money or gift cards to do my next haul. But I will definitely be ordering more and I think that I will be working with these more. I love the feel of them and I... I was pleasantly surprised, although I have heard people rave about them, so I can't be entirely surprised. But I almost, I don't know, when people hype things up so much, I, a lot of times they don't live up to expectations. And while I do think that these are an awesome pencil and I will definitely be buying more, I also don't think it's necessary to have to, like... I'm very happy with the other pencils I have. I'm very happy with my Polychromos and my Derwent Lightfast. And so I won't necessarily be replacing pencils, I don't think. Like, I don't know that I'll be working with these 100% of the time. I'm definitely going to supplement. A lot of times I work with a lot of brands all at once anyways, depending on the colors, because things are always slightly a little bit different, even with similar colors across brands. And so I'll probably just be supplementing that way. However, I do think that it was really exciting that I could do this piece with just this set. Normally, I would have to bring in my Derwent drawing Chinese white or my Derwent drawing black. And while I wasn't 100% pleased with the black, I still was able to get by with it without having to supplement. And it's not often that that happens. I, there's very few times that I'm not pulling in my Derwent drawing pencils. Something else that was really fun um, is that they built up really well. Like you could layer them really, really easily. And I like doing lots of layers with my colored pencils. However, it didn't take as many layers as normal to get to the saturation I wanted, but it layered enough that I was also able to come in with my craft knife and remove if I needed to without having to worry about damaging the paper. And that was really awesome because a lot some pencils, they're harder to remove than others. They sink into the paper differently. And part of that could be the paper that I'm using which, by the way, I'm going to have to buy a bigger size of now because I'm really enjoying this for colored pencil. And I believe this is my first, maybe my first or second time using this for colored pencil. And I really like that. And it's the only size I have right now is a six by eight block. So that's another place where I'll end up spending money down the line. But I digress. The pencil removed really easily to expose layers below. And so it made it really nice to create highlights in the trees and for leaves and things like that. I was also able to use my electric eraser to lighten things and my precision eraser by Faber-Castell to lighten things. I also used the mono eraser. Those kind of smeared things around a little bit. I found I had more luck with my electric eraser. Again, that could be a combination between the pencil and the paper. I'm not sure which one is the reason for that. But you can't really argue with the high saturation of the colors, and I'm very happy with that. So all in all, like, I tried all the different things I normally try. I burnished, and it worked great. I tried light layers until the tooth of the paper was full, and that worked great. I used OMS, and that worked great. And so... It's, they're hit, it's hitting all the marks. These pencils are hitting all the marks. And again, I'm almost regretful of it because I really don't need more pencils. I really don't need to be spending more money on pencils. And here we are. <laughs> I want them. I don't want them all. Again, I'm never going to invest in the full set. I don't think it's really worth it because there's a lot of pencils that I'm not going to use. And I feel like as far as 
if you want neon colors and if you want pastel colors i mean yes that's fun but if you're if you're somebody who's interested in your work being archival, then you're probably not going to want to use those colors in your work. And if you're somebody who's not interested in your work being archival and not interested in being pro a professional, then I see no reason to drop $500 on a set of colored pencils. Um, that's really what it comes down to. So I feel like if you're somebody who's after those colors, I would look for them in a cheaper brand. If you're somebody who's, you know, looking to use them for coloring books or just looking to just play around with colored pencils, I wouldn't necessarily get these. If you're somebody who is able to make money off your artwork and you're able to take the money you make from your artwork and invest in your supplies, then okay. These really are kind of a pricey pencil. I bought my set for $78.72, which equals out to about $3.28 per pencil, but they're actually only $3.16 open stock. So it's it's almost easier just to get the open stock pencils and then to choose the colors you like, which is what I'm going to be doing from now on. Like I said, I'm looking up the ones that I believe to be light fast. I am anxious to see the Colored Pencil Society of America's light fast ratings, and I'm hopeful that they will match up with Holbein's testing. I mean, Holbein is a company that... It's a reputable company. It has been selling art supplies. I don't I don't know a whole lot about the company itself. I do know it is a professional brand company and that they have been selling art supplies for a very long time. And I have some of their other art supplies. So I I do trust their light fast ratings as long as I'm understanding them correctly, which my assessment seems to be the general consensus on the internet as far as how they rate their stuff. But I just want to say, like, I do love these pencils. I am pretty happy with them. I definitely will be getting more, but that does not mean that they're the be-all, end-all, and that you have to necessarily go out and get them if you don't have the money. Although, I did find this 24 set to be quite helpful and quite a good starter set, especially for me who likes to do landscapes. I'm really happy with their range of blues in this set. I didn't get to mention that when I was doing the sky because I am somebody who loves drawing and painting blue skies. And the colors in this set are perfect for that. I was very, very excited about that. And for the most part, I'm happy with the greens. It only came with one gray. However, it's easy to supplement and make your own grays by doing layering of complementary colors and browns and blues and things like that so i was able to supplement to get the grays that i needed in the you know like in the clouds and in on this little road here and things like that so all in all i guess basically what it comes down to is yes i am very happy with these is it worth the money for me it was worth the money for the set however i do think that you don't have to have these pencils to succeed as a colored pencil artist. So if you already have the Polychromos and you already have the Derwent Lightfast or Prismacolors even, like you don't have to go out of your way to buy them. I'm very happy with them, but I'm also somebody who is an art supply fiend. And so when I really like something, I want more. And that's really my own <laughs> kind of thing. But I do feel like, yeah, I gave into the peer pressure. Everybody wanted me to try them. I wasn't going to try them. And I did, I tried them. And I don't regret it. I'm very happy with them. I think they live up to most of their reputation. And yeah, I think they will become one of my favorite colored pencils now. So, all right. I hope that you found this useful. I know I kind of was rambling a little bit towards the end. But I do recommend these pencils if you have it in the budget. If not, um, yeah, just stick with what you have, I guess, which is probably what I should have done. All right, so here's the final piece. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.